When a blood vessel ruptures, blood will begin to move from a high pressure to low pressure from the inside of the blood vessel to the outside surrounding tissue. In the event of vessel wall injury, bleeding will occur. Because our blood vessels rupture constantly in our body, our body has a way to actually repair these ruptures in our blood vessel. And the process by which our body repairs these ruptures is known as the blood clotting cascade. So an important property of our blood is its ability to coagulate. And what that means is to form these clumps we call blood clots. And these blood clots can bind to these ruptures, aggregate along the ruptures, and they can seal off that rupture in the blood vessel. And this prevents the leakage of our blood out of that blood vessel. The process of hemostasis has many components and interacting mechanisms that often appear complicated and difficult to grasp. Multiple factors activate each other from different pathways under the control of various enzymatic reactions in a very convoluted manner. However, if looked at from the perspective of what happens at the injury site to specifically stop bleeding, it is in fact quite simple to understand. Only two blood components emerge as necessary, platelets and fibrin. The integrity of the vessel wall and the endothelial cells that lie therein is monitored by circulating platelets. When injury to the vessel wall occurs, Endothelial damage results in the exposure of subendothelial collagen fibers. This subsequently leads to a response from platelets, which adhere at the site of injury, are activated, and aggregate to form a primary hemostatic plug. Adherent platelets are activated and attract other platelets through a process known as platelet aggregation. Fibrinogen molecules form bridges between adjacent platelets. This forms an aggregate of platelets that occludes the wound and eventually stops bleeding. This unstable primary plug of loosely aggregated platelets must then be consolidated into a more stable plug. When there is a tear in a blood vessel, the first thing that happens is that the nearby platelets are activated and become sticky. They start sticking to each other and to the sides of the hole in the blood vessel. For small holes, enough platelets usually stick together to form a temporary plug. But a platelet plug isn't strong enough to block the opening for long, so it must be reinforced with other materials. Otherwise, the blood flowing past the hole could wash the plug away. A special kind of clotting factor can weave itself together with others of the same kind and form a web of fibrous tissue called fibrin. This web acts like glue and holds the platelets and the other clotting factors together, creating a blood clot. Fibrin in wound healing. Fibrin is the biological glue that eventually seals the hemostatic plug and ensures hemostasis. As soon as a small amount of thrombin is formed, the clotting process accelerates and provides more and more thrombin into the wound. At high concentrations, this thrombin quickly converts fibrinogen to fibrin on the surface of the platelet aggregate to stabilize the hemostatic plug. The integrity of this seal relies on fibrin mesh formation, termed secondary hemostasis, to stabilize the plug. Fibrin formation is the result of the coagulation cascade, a series of enzymatic reactions that result in the production of covalently cross-linked fibrin. Factor number 13. Factor number 13 is a very important factor and it is known as the fibrin stabilizing factor. And what this factor does is basically it stabilizes the fibrin monomers that are formed after the fibrinogen is converted into fibrin. Because initially, after conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, these fibers are not bound strongly. So the factor number 13 produces covalent bonds in between them and forms a strong fibrin mesh. When sufficient quantity of thrombin is formed in the blood, it leads to the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. But initially, these fibrin are just monomers and they cannot form a stable clot. So, in the presence of calcium ions, the fibrin stabilizing factor, which is actually the factor number 13, it acts on them and converts them into fibrin polymers by formation of covalent bonds in the fibrin monomers.
and eventually they lead to the formation of a clot. Thrombin acts on fibrinogen to form fibrin monomers. But these monomers are not stable and they cannot form a clot. So the fibrin stabilizing factor which is the factor number 13, it uh, acts upon the fibrin monomers and for forms a lot of covalent bonds between the fibrin monomers and this leads to the formation of a fibrin mesh. In the final steps, thrombin converts fibrinogen, both that which is circulating and that which has been recently released by activated platelets, to fibrin. Soluble fibrin monomers spontaneously polymerize into relatively weak threads. Factor 13A, which is also activated by thrombin, then cross-links and strengthens the overlapping fibrin strands. The cross-linked fibrin, which forms a three-dimensional mesh in which red blood cells and platelets become trapped. The thrombin formed during the propagation phase of coagulation is of sufficient concentration to promote fibrin clot formation. Thrombin cleaves fibrinopeptides A and B from fibrinogen to form a soluble fibrin monomer. Fibrin monomers polymerize spontaneously to form an insoluble fibrin mesh. Thrombin also converts factor 13 to factor 13A, the transglutaminase that stabilizes the fragile clot by covalently cross-linking fibrin, making the fibrin polymer resistant to lysis. The end goal of this whole cascade is to get these fibrin molecules. And these fibrin molecules together will form some strands. But it actually turns out that there's one more step, which is to connect these strands together. And so we're going to want to connect these strands together with some cross-links. These cross-links will just hold them together so that they actually form a tight mesh. And it turns out that it's this step right here, which is enabled by factor 13. And so let's draw the final thrombin activity, which is to activate 13. So once we form thrombin, it calls upon platelets. It also activates another fiber protein known as fibrinogen. And fibrinogen basically is activated into fibrin. So fibrin is the active form of fibrinogen, which is activated by thrombin. And it's Fi uh, and it's fibrin that actually binds together to form that mesh-like network within our rupture and that seals off that rupture. So basically the fibrin um, with the help of this protein factor 13, which is also activated by thrombin, the fibrin can form these covalent bonds between other adjacent fibrin uh, proteins, and so we eventually form these blood clots. So thrombin not only activates platelets and calls upon platelets, it also forms fibrin and it activates factor 13 that is needed to form the covalent bonds between many of these adjacent fibrin that lie along that rupture. So thrombin does three things. It activates our platelets, it calls upon these platelets, it activates fibrinogen into fibrin, and it activates factor 13 that is needed to basically covalently bond these fibrin along that rupture to form that mesh-like network of proteins that seals off that rupture and prevents the movement of blood out of that blood vessel Thrombin will break down the fibrinogen to fibrin monomer, right? And these fibrin monomer will deposit here. What are these? As this reaction will continue again and again, right? And thrombin will keep on activating the fibrinogen to fibrin monomers, and all this reaction is occurring on the surface of platelets. And on the platelets, a lot of fibrin monomers are deposited. Meanwhile, thrombin also activate another substance which is called thrombin stabilizing factor that is activated what is this thrombin stabilizing factor which is also called factor number 13 factor number 13 so thrombin can produce the fibrin monomers thrombin can produce the fibrin monomer at the same time it activates factor number 13 which is fibrin stabilizing factor and fibrin number third 
fibrin stabilizing factor or activated factor number 13 is an enzyme which will rush on these monomers and produce what cross linking of these monomers so all these monomers get cross linked now this become a strong covalent meshwork and network of fibrin on the platelets and within the platelet plug within the platelet plug and on the surface of the platelet now this primary platelet plug has been converted into secondary platelet plug or secondary hemostatic plug in summary when there is injury to a vessel wall activation of platelets primary hemostasis and the coagulation cascade secondary hemostasis occurs simultaneously platelets are captured by subendothelial proteins and ultimately aggregate to form a platelet plug during this process they are activated to provide a procoagulant surface on which coagulation protein complexes are formed resulting in thrombin generation fibrin formation is the final step of the coagulation cascade and provides a cross-linked mesh structure which is resistant to lysis the fibrin binds to and stabilizes the platelet plug leading to the cessation of bleeding so what is the final end result of this incredibly complex series of reactions starting with platelet adhesion and including platelet activation and secretion platelet aggregation the coagulation cascade polymerization of fibrin and last the antithrombotic control mechanisms it's this this is a colorized scanning electron micrograph of a thrombus or blood clot red blood cells are obvious the irregular gray blobs are platelet aggregates the green cell right in the middle is a white blood cell and the hundreds of brown strands into which the cells are entangled are fibrin for me seeing a picture like this really emphasizes what an amazing process hemostasis is